35, Isaiah 35, verses 1 and 2, New Living Translation. Even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring crocuses. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. The deserts will become as green as the mountains of Lebanon, as lovely as Mount Carmel or the plain of Sharon. There, the Lord will display his glory, the splendor of our God. <laughs> Blossoming by faith number three. This year, <laughs> your life will be so colorful, so beautiful. It will display the splendor of God and the glory and the beauty of God. If you believe that, say amen. <laughs> Miracles are happening in the desert, happening in seemingly impossible places. And we've been saying, if a desert is going to turn into a green field like that, then it's got to be a product of divine intervention. If there is going to be divine intervention, then there's got to be the exercise of faith on our own part. God will do his part. We've got to do our own part. In John chapter 9, Christ met a man, right? A man who was born blind. Christ and his disciples were going past and they saw the man. Anyway, long story short, Christ spat into the ground, made some mud, put it on the man's eyes and told him to go wash at the pool of Siloam. The Bible records that the man went down, washed, and started seeing. It was a creative miracle. <laughs> that was blossoming in the desert. Eyes that had never seen light before. The man was born blind. And he got eyes, seeing eyes that day. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your creative power. In the beginning, God created. This is that kind of a year where if what God has promised you does not exist, he will create it. <laughs> God is birthing through your life this year things that have never existed before. Someone is getting a creative miracle right now. God is creating a new body part for you in the name of Jesus Christ, right? Christ demonstrated God's creativity. So talk about an impossible situation. But this is where I'm going. Christ gave the man an instruction and he went down to the pool of Siloam and washed and his eyes were opened. The big question, when actually were his eyes opened? Somebody says, oh no, <laughs> simple question. When he washed at the pool of Siloam, I say, okay, hold on. If Christ had not touched his eyes, had not put something there, and gave him that inspired instruction, if he went to the pool of Siloam and washed his eyes, would anything have happened? No. No. So we cannot say that it is only what he did at the pool of Siloam that caused his eyes to open. The starting point was what Christ did. On the other hand, if after Christ had touched him and given him the instruction, he did not go to the pool of Siloam, would his eyes have opened? No. Good. <laughs> that makes our equation complete. You need the combination of divinity and humanity to produce miracles. That's what we're trying to say. And our own part as humans is faith. And faith is believing in unseen realities to the point where you base your decisions and your actions on them. In fact, you act on them. Long and short, you act on what God said. You act on what God said. That is what bats miracles in the physical. And that is faith. 
So we said that our job as pastors <laughs> this month is to prepare you like Mary did in John chapter 2, right? The wine ran out and Mary knew it was Jesus that could do something about it. The second person of the Trinity was standing there. So she went to request from him and then she went to prepare the waiters. When he gives the instruction, you guys are close to missing a miracle. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Not analyze it, do. So this year of blossoming is a year for doing. And like Nike would say, just do it. <laughs> Help me to tell the person next to you, just do it. You had it over and over again. Too much analysis leads to paralysis. All right. So let's go back to the story of the blind man and the pool of Siloam. So something changed. The real change, the spiritual dimension of the change happened when Christ touched him and spoke to him, right? This is important. We're discussing faith because faith is an identity thing. It's not just about circumstances. It runs deep. It runs deep to redefining how you see yourself, to redefining who you think you are. Hmm. First John chapter 4, verse 4 says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Okay? <clears throat> okay, and you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's first John 4 4. Then first John 5 4 says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And you derive your nature from the person that gave birth to you, right? Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So the starting point is the nature that you share with God and your sense of identity, who you believe you are. This is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. The point at which Christ touched that man and spoke to him spiritually, he became a seeing man. Hmm. Who God says you are, that's who you are. In Romans chapter 4, what was the refrain there? According to that which was spoken, I have made you a father of many nations. From the moment God said it, that was who Abraham was. You notice eventually that God got him to change his name. Right? Hmm. So God would speak to people and change their names in the Bible. Faith is an identity thing. That's the starting point. Do you believe you are who God says you are. I had an interesting experience many years ago. <laughs> the few of us that were around then would remember. I was praying to God. Now, this was many years ago, right? We had just moved into our former location. I was praying to the Lord and, and asking him for a car. I was believing God for a car, a used car, which was okay, you know, at that time. The only thing is, as I prayed, the Holy Spirit said, why is it a used car you are believing for? I had done it a few times before, right? A and I got my manifestation. <laughs> and those are stories for another day. But this particular time, the Holy Spirit himself said, why is it a used car? Why not a new one? And I said, oh, well... It's just that the new ones have become very expensive. He said, well, do you remember that when you were young, people came out of university, they got their jobs. Before they came out of school, they resumed school immediately. Two weeks after they started their jobs, they gave them car loans and they bought brand new cars, fresh graduates out of university. I said, yes, but that was then. So the Holy Spirit said, so what changed? I said, the economy and the currency. He said, fine. Is that why you are asking me for a new car? Is that why you cannot believe for a new one? 
he said, does not my word say that the just shall live by his faith? He said, is it faith? Is it actually the economy or the exchange rate that now determines faith? He said, did my word not say that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? He said, so you say the currency has been devalued, but it is not the currency that I used to manufacture faith. He said, it is my word that I used to manufacture faith and my word cannot be devalued. So why are you allowing yourself to be dragged down with the economy? And I said, whoa. <laughs> right? Whoa. So what do you do when the Holy Spirit himself is telling you, I want to do something for you, but you're shooting too low. Your expectation is just not allowing me to do what I want to do. You, you, you jack up your expectation to meet with what he has in store for you, right? So I remember then that I announced in church, <laughs> this is what the Holy Spirit told me. So right now, I am trusting God for a brand new car. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I was calling myself what God called me. Yeah, I, a few days later, one of our pastors came and said, some church members said that they're actually putting money together right now to buy you a car, but it's not a new car. They said they can't afford a new car. So wh why don't you believe God first for <laughs> a used one and then later we can get you the new car? I said, I just laughed. I said, oh my God, I'm sorry that people are coming under pressure. I said, please tell them, tell them whatever it is God laid on their heart. <laughs> <laughs> they should do. I said, you see, this new car business, it has absolutely nothing to do with anybody. I'm not looking at anybody or their capacity. I said, it's absolutely between me and God. I can't but say what God said. Right. So there's someone listening to me right now. This year, your status has changed. <laughs> oh, billionaire. Did you hear me? Billionaire, your status has changed. I don't know what it is that God told you, <laughs> you know, as you were coming into this year, but what God said is coming to pass. Right? Father of many nations. If that's, that's what God told you, mother of many nations, if that's what God told you, that is what it is. Amen? Okay, so I'm saying this faith business starts first from your identity, who you believe you are. And we have said it. We're discussing faith because you will have to define natural circumstances this year. You will have to break the barrier. Yeah, you will have to break that mental barrier, that, that barrier of logic. You will have to break it to experience the impossible this year. You remember the man that fetched the water into the pot in John chapter 2 and Christ said he should take the same water Right? And take it as if it was wine to the wine table and something happened in the process. Ah, many things will happen in the process of your taking action this year. But the starting point has to be your sense of identity, your self esteem, your self esteem, your self image, your self confidence, who you believe you are. You remember this is why one of the major reasons why Israel could not make it into Canaan? Yeah, go home and read again Numbers 13 and read Numbers 14. Mm -hmm. 12 spies, 12 top leaders of the 12 tribes that Moses chose to go spy out the land flowing with milk and honey just to let you know this is going to be a fight. That's what we said. <laughs> it's the fight of faith that your, your, your brain, some ideas will be fighting in your brain. Something will be telling you, but you're an adult. Why are you doing this? Are you crazy? Right? You will say some things, some people will look at you like you are mad, but you will have to say it because that was what God said. We said you will fight battles in your emotions this year, right? But you want to follow through with what God said. Anyway, 12 leaders, they went to the land flowing with Mecca honey, came back, and 10, for 10, their self esteem was shattered. Their self confidence had disintegrated. Why? Because of what they saw. They forgot what God said. They forgot who they were. The night that they slaughtered a lamb for each family in Egypt and splashed the blood on the doorpost, the covenant Abraham had with God was reactivated. 
they became one with God. The same people who were one with God. Hmm. After seeing the land flowing with milk and honey, came back and said, we're finished. The land that we saw is full of giants. It swallows up its inhabitants. And then they said, that's in Numbers 13, 33, right? And we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And so we were in their eyes. What are you going to say about yourself this year? Who are you going to call yourself this year? Right? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. There's a lot going on. And, and I'm not making light at all of what is going on. I'm just saying this is the house of faith. This is the school of faith. What God has said is what God has said. <laughs> right? And you will have to build your sense of identity on what God said. Amen. So at the river Jordan, God says to Christ, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then when he had not eaten for 40 days or 40 nights, Satan came and wanted to leverage his deprivation of food. Wanted to leverage the lack of food. But he failed. <laughs> this is the year you will have to tell the devil. My situation, it's a lie. That situation, it is temporary. It's a lie. What God said is the truth. Hallelujah. So, faith is an identity thing. Call yourself who God has called you. Amen. <laughs> I recall that when I was in school, an engineering student, I had written then millionaire in training. Millionaire in training. That was what I saw. Called myself who God called me. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> the next thing, faith makes you to see differently. Faith makes you to see Differently. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. New King James Version. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. Why we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You see, faith influences your interpretation of phenomena. What other people's what other people would see and say, yay, we're finished. You would say, yay, this is it. This is the breakthrough that God spoke about, right? I recall the, the <laughs> senior army officer, you know, who was retired in our church many years before. He was retired suddenly and you hear such announcements on the media on a Friday, <laughs> right? And then he said he went back to his house and then put in, it was cassettes then, music cassettes, put them on continuous play and was singing and dancing throughout the night. Why? He said two weeks before, one of our pastors approached him and said, the Holy Spirit said, I should tell you that there's promotion coming for you very soon. So once the announcement was made, he said, this must be the promotion that God spoke about. You see his interpretation? Faith makes you to see differently while we do not look at the things that are seen. You can't afford to let your five senses run your life. They can detect, they can sense data, right? Sense movement, sense changes in the physical, but your faith is not built on that. Your faith is built on what God said. Amen. Mm-hmm. So he said his sister came to his house the next day and she asked, brother, is it true? He said, yes. She started crying. He said, hold it. Mm -mm. I am celebrating the promotion, right? There's no room for crying here. Will you drink Coke? <laughs> Woo! Powerful testimony. God restored everything, everything. He lost nothing. He made more money and all that. So faith makes you to see differently. When David saw Goliath, he saw Goliath differently. Everybody saw Goliath run away from him. David saw Goliath and ran towards him. You see what I'm saying? The very things that are crushing other people this year, those are the things God will use as catalyst to create your miracle. If you believe that, say amen. 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 <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's wedding here will be sweet this year. <laughs> Woo! Next, faith makes you to run towards giants. 
faith makes you to run towards giants. Faith makes you to take action in seemingly impossible situations and circumstances because you are seeing differently. So you are acting differently. This year, many people will start new businesses. People already in business will start new businesses. This year, many people are going to scale up this year. Some are taking over new territories this year. If you believe that, say it powerfully, amen. amen. This is a faith oppression. Okay? This is a faith oppression. This. This blossoming business is a faith oppression. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. You believe God so much. You build your life on what he said. You build your words on what he said. This is not a year for running around people who have no faith. This is not a year for someone to remind you <laughs> that you're supposed to be normal. Excuse me, these are extraordinary times. Come on. <laughs> this is not that kind of a year where you entertain doubts or fear or anxiety. It's risky. Remember Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2? Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us the word was preached as well as unto them. But the word that was preached did not profit them, because it was not mixed with what? Faith in those that had it. Faith. You back up a few verses to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. It says, so you, we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Finally, faith prevents you from compromise. Faith prevents you from compromise. <laughs> Hebrews eleven twenty seven, 27. By an act of faith, he turned his heel on Egypt, indifferent to the king's blind rage. He had his eye on the one no eye, no eye can see and kept right on going. In other words, Satan will be so scared of this your faith dimension this year, he's going to throw temptations across your path to distract you, right? That's what he did with Christ, isn't it? He succeeded with the first Adam, but gratefully he failed. <laughs> Satan failed with the last Adam, Jesus Christ. So it's either going to be whether you trust God absolutely to fulfill the promise that he has given you, or you are going to be willing to compromise with someone to make some quick bucks somewhere. You're going to be willing to compromise with someone just to be able to gain some small advantage or make some small prog progress somewhere. But when I read Hebrews 11, I read about people who refused to compromise for any reason. I read about Daniel, Daniel's friends, who said to the king, while they were looking at fierce, hot fire, king, we will not compromise. We're not bowing down to worship you. We're not bowing down to worship your statue. Our God whom we serve, he is able to save us. If I want you to know this king, even if he does not save us, we will not compromise. Aha! God is going to show himself powerful on the behalf of people here today. <laughs> someone, some, someone here they will have to take somebody out on your behalf. For someone, they will have to dissolve a board on your behalf. No compromise. If it is God, let it be God. God does not need our help. Amen. All this mixing of, <laughs> mixing of things, I mean diabolical things, juju or charms, we call them. All this mixing of, oh, even God himself knows, you know, God, heaven helps those who have not. Don't deceive yourself, right? The people who walk by faith and laid examples for us in Hebrews 11, they were uncompromising. And God wants such uncompromising faith. If you are really, really sure about it, Joining a cult, mixing that with being a Christian, hello, that's not going to work this year, right? <laughs> Uncompromising faith. All right. So let's wrap it up. How do we get faith? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So 
then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what you see and hear consistently over time is what enters your heart. Or what God tells you, right, is what enters your heart and forms faith. Faith comes hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith, you know, the word of God unlocks God's creative power. He- Hebrews 11.3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed, created by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made from things that are visible. I see the creative power of God being unleashed in your life this year. Somebody doesn't believe it. Let me say it for myself. I see the creative power of God going to work on my behalf this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. (laughs) Amen. Woo! Go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see the creative power of God at work in my life this year. Use that to pray. I see the creative power of God bringing into existence things that have never existed before. The God that calls the things that do not exist as though they did. (laughs) And then they do. Hallelujah. The God that caused Abraham at the age of 100 and Sarah at the age of 90, well past human capacity to birth a baby and they produce the baby. That God is at work in my life this year. The creative power of God is at work in my life this year. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I receive your creative word. In the beginning, God said, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So from the beginning of this year, God said, God said, God said. In my marriage, God said. In my career, God said. In my finances, God said. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I open up to revelation this year in the name of of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, I have spoken your words, not mine. And I ask, Heavenly Father, the power of the Holy Spirit (laughs) that executes your word, brings your word into manifestation. I ask that the Spirit of God should touch everyone that is a part of this service, physically, online, TV, Let the power of the Holy Spirit engage each one now in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that makes it difficult for us to have faith, every doubt, every fear, every lie that makes it difficult for us to trust you absolutely, we declare they are destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive for each one an impartation of faith. <laughs> Woo! An impartation of belief in possibilities. And Lord, I receive divine energy to prompt us to action in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we break through the barrier of logic. We break through the barrier of reason. We break through our past barriers and limitations. We enter into new dimensions. New dimensions of action and new dimensions of miracles. Whatever was a source of concern before this service, I declare a supernatural turnaround. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we turn them into testimonies. We turn them into testimonies. In the name of Jesus, I declare for each one this year is the best year you have ever lived in your life until now. In the name of Jesus, we join faith together in Jesus' name to destroy every life-threatening sickness. In the name of Jesus, we destroy cancer. In the name of Jesus Christ, renal failure stops. In the name of Jesus, we prophesy right now the healing of kidneys. The healing of lungs, hmm. healing of pancreas, healing of liver, healing of blood vessels, healing of hearts. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Miracles, miracles happen. Miracles. We prophesy financial turnaround. We prophesy miracles of provision. We prophesy in the midst of imp- 
impossible situations and circumstances, we prophesy miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. The big question, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Will your relationship right now, the quality of your relationship, the state of your relationship with God, will it allow for you to hear God right now? Sin is the biggest problem. Sin is man's biggest problem. So if you're that honest person who says, my relationship with God is not okay, I need God to forgive my sins. Good. God sent Jesus to die for us on the cross. This price has been paid for the sins. God just wants us to say, forgive me. So I want that honest person. I want that honest person. Can you put your hand on your heart? My relationship with God is not okay. Pastor, pray with me that God should forgive my sins. God bless you. Put your hand on your heart and say this prayer after me. Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name. 